Deep Vein Thrombosis, DVT, and Pulmonary Embolism, PE. DVT is the formation of a blood clot thrombus within a deep vein. The deep veins pass through the deep tissue and muscles. Muscle contractions from walking, running activity will squeeze the blood through the deep veins to the heart. The deep veins have valves which prevent the blood from flowing back to the ankles and feet. When a blood clot is formed, the majority of the blood clots usually are broken down or dissolved. Large clots may form and they are a problem. They can block the vein, causing the patient to complain of pain, discomfort, and the swelling. Hohmann sign is usually not very specific. High index of suspicion is necessary for the diagnosis. So what is the Vicau triad? It is an endothelial injury, venous stasis, and the hypercoagulability. If you have all the three elements, you can develop a deep venous thrombosis, and one of the triad may contribute more than the others. If you have all the three elements, you probably will have a high probability of developing DVT than if you have one element or two. There are several risk factors for the development of DVT. The most important risk factor for DVT is a history of previous DVT. Another one is malignancy. Up to 20% will develop that. Oral contraceptive therapy, aging, obesity, smoking. The Vicau triad is very important here. So let's take the venous stasis. At immobilization of the patient, the patient is not out of bed, not moving, physiotherapy is not available, or the doctor forgot to write the order, or patient is taking an airplane for a long period of time without movement and not taking any aspirin. The second one is intimate injury from trauma such as in fracture dislocation or the intimate injury can result from surgery. Surgery itself is a risk factor because of the use of general anesthesia. Hypercoagulable state is a big deal. It could be inherited or could be coming from genetics, like factor V lidane, protein S deficiency, protein C deficiency. It seems like increased blood viscosity plus immobilization plus an intimal tear from surgery or trauma may lead to DVT. Once the condition of DVT is suspected, a venous Doppler ultrasound examination is ordered to confirm the diagnosis. If the study is positive and the clot is above the knee, then DVT is usually treated with heparin therapy followed by long-term comedin therapy. Occasionally, a vena cava filter is used. Where does the deep venous thrombosis come from? Deep venous thrombosis, DVT, predominantly occur within the deep veins of the legs above the knee. It may also occur in the upper extremities. What condition can cause DVT? A spinal cord injury, total knee replacement, which will have more DVT and less PE than a total hip replacement. Polytrauma patient, hip fractures, total hip replacements, will have less DVT but more PEs than total knee replacement. So what is the prophylaxis for DVT? Usually a chemical or mechanical prophylaxis or both. The chemical prophylaxis will include anticoagulants such as aspirin, lovonox, comedin, heparin and others. 
each of these has its own advantage and disadvantage. Lovonox decreases the incidence of DVT but does not decrease the rate of death from PE. This is based on published data. None of the anticoagulation agents, including Lovonox, provide absolute protection against deep venous thrombosis or PE. Both the chest surgeons and the orthopedic surgeons' organizational guidelines are related to total joint arthroplasty and hip fractures. Currently, there are no guidelines for prophylaxis in the trauma patient. When given prophylaxis, you must weigh the risk of complications such as bleeding versus the benefit of preventing DVT. Mechanical prophylaxis should be used more often in the majority of patients or in all patients who need prophylaxis. Mechanical compression devices is recommended by the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeon in low or high risk groups, especially if the patient is having a joint replacement. Mechanical compression increases the venous return and the endothelial drived fibrinolysis. What is a pulmonary embolism? A pulmonary embolism is blockage of the pulmonary artery in the lung that can lead to death. Usually, the pulmonary embolus can become lodged within the upper or the lower portion of either one of the lungs. It is possible for the blood clot to become lodged in the middle where the pulmonary artery branches, and it's called saddle embolus. PE occurs in about 700,000 patients per year, can be fatal in about 200,000 patients. Early diagnosis of pulmonary embolism and early treatment are the most important factor for survival of the patient. According to the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeon, the rate of DVT does not correlate with PE. One does not need to have DVT in order to develop a PE. The origin of the PE is debatable. Part of the blood clot may break off into the blood stream and may travel to the heart. If the blood clot becomes lodged in the pulmonary artery of the lung, this may be fatal. Another opinion is stated that the occluding embolus occur in the lung per se means the blood clot may occur in the pulmonary artery itself and not originating from the leg. That is particularly important when the patient doesn't have any symptoms in the leg or any evidence or of a blood clot, but the patient dies from a PE. Where did this clot come from? That's a very important issue. According to the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeon, published guidelines in page 32, they stated that this result illustrates that the presence of a DVT may not reliably predict PE, and the absence of DVT does not seem to assure physicians and the patient that the patient will not have a PE. So the best thing is to advise the patient that the patient may get a PE even if they are on prophylaxis for DVT and educate the patient on the symptoms of a PE. For example, if we operate on the hip or the knee and the patient have symptoms in the chest, dyspnea, he can't breathe, the patient need to call the doctor immediately or go to the emergency room immediately because early diagnosis is very important for the survival of that patient. Pulmonary embolism should be suspected in patients postoperatively with acute chest pain, tachypnea, tachycardia, syncope, seizures. 
The diagnosis is usually done with a ventilation perfusion, VQ scan, and helical chest CT scan. Treatment is done with IV heparin followed by Comedin. Occasionally, a vena cava filter is used. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.